Okay, now, sorry, the camera stopped. Let's continue where we stop. I had uh, one tube. Again, I said the mother blood is coming from the caudal side, going craniate. And again, I said that I want more speed to that blood. So the heart tube itself will start contracting to pump the blood upward. As simple as that. And we also explained that this heart tube is only connected at its cranial end and its caudal end. It doesn't have any connections anteriorly, posteriorly, or laterally. Two connections. Cranial end, posterior, I'm sorry. Cranial end, inferior end. The inferior end is receiving the blood from the mother. Cranial end is bombing the blood. Okay? We end it there. And then let us continue the story of this heart tube. Of course, these contractions are initiated from the tube itself. There's no, there wasn't any electrical stimuli or any hormonal stimuli, or at least it's not known. The heart by itself starts contracting, and we call these contractions cardiogenic. Cardio is from the heart, and genic is originating from the heart. So they are cardiogenic, as simple as that, OK? This tube then will start having three constrictions. Three important constrictions. One under its cranial end, one in the middle, and one inferior. Okay? Now, imagine that this is the first constriction and this is the middle constriction. Above the first constriction, I will have a dilation. Under it, I will have a dilation. Under this dilation, I would have the middle constriction. Under this middle constriction, I will have again a dilation. And under this dilation, I will have the third or the inferior constriction. Under this inferior constriction, I will have a dilation. So, four constrictions, three dilations. Imagine that these three fingers are my constrictions, and these are my dilations. As simple as that. Four dilations and three constrictions. Now, let's start naming these dilations. The upper dilation would be my bulbous cordis. And there it is, colored by both the black and the green color. Under it, I will have the ventricle. Under it, or the third dilation will be the atria, colored by red. And under it, the fourth dilation would be my sinus venosus, also colored by red. So again, from cranial to caudal, bulbous coitus, ventricle, atrium, and sinus venosus. Now let me ask you a tricky question. We all know that the ventricle in adults is below the atrium, right? It's not above it. So how come in the infant, my ventricle is above my atrium? And we all know that the venous blood is coming right next to the arterial blood. They are both coming from the upper side, right? They are superior and inferior vena cava and the aorta. They are both coming from the upper end. They are not coming one from caudal end and one from cranial end. So how will this happen? In the upcoming part, we will explain that. But keep in your mind at this moment that I have four dilations. I will answer this tricky question later on. Now let us continue. We already explained what did we mean by cardiogenic contractions or initial heart contractions are cardiogenic. We already explained the, four, uh, the dilations of the heart, pulpus cortis, ventricle, atrium, and sinus venosus. Now let us start, continue what will happen. These are the two endocardial tubes, they fuse, and there they are, and there they are fused together and having their four dilations. These are the caudal openings. Of course, we uh, can assume that it's one in here. And this is the cranial ending. ending. So one cranial ending and one caudal ending. Before we continue, let us just explain what do we mean by an artery and what do we mean by a vein at this stage. An artery is simply carrying blood from the heart. A vein is carrying blood to the heart. We are not refraining if they contain nutrients or oxygen at this stage. Simply, anything going away from the heart is an artery. Anything coming to the heart is a vein. At this stage, the vein will be carrying the nutrients and oxygen because it will be coming from the mother, right? And the cranial end will be pumping that blood, but it will have less nutrients and less oxygen because the heart itself consumed 
part of the nutrients and oxygen. Because at this moment, the heart itself is forming and itself needs energy. Okay? Now, let us start seeing in this picture what I have or the circulation around the heart at this stage. Venous blood is coming from the mother to the sinus, venosis. This venous blood is going then to the atrium. And the atrium is going to bump it into the ventricle. Then the blood will go from the ventricle to the bulbous cortis. And from the bulbous cortis to the arteries that will supply the embryo. And here you can notice them. But in this picture also you can notice an interesting thing. That there are arrows circulating. Now we are going to start answering the first tricky question. We said that at this stage the ventricle is above my atrium. Let us see how well it become under my atrium and how will my atrium become above my ventricle. For that purpose I brought Yani a tube. Now I know it's used for cleaning in the house, but we need it for the explanation. Assume that this is my bulbous cortis, this end. This end between here and here is my ventricle. And this end from here to here is my atrium and this end is my sinus venosus. Of course this tube is taller than me so I'm having trouble in controlling it. Anyhow, what will happen next is I will have something called right dextral or dextral right-handed folding. What will happen? We said that at the cranial end, the heart is connected, it will not move. And at its caudal end, it's also connected and it will not move. The only free to move area would be between it, between the cranial and caudal end, right? Now let me tell you, in the middle it will not move. So I have, I will have two areas that will move. One area above the middle and one area below the middle, right? Let us see what will happen. The cranial ending or the upper end will move anteriorly. Okay, let me see it in here. Will move anteriorly and caudally. Okay, focus please. Will move anteriorly and caudally. And then the posterior end will be moving posteriorly and superiorly. At the end, at the end, I will have this form. This is the part that moved, moved anteriorly and caudally, and this would be, or this loop in here, would be the part that moved posteriorly and superiorly. I will have an S shape, right? This is called the S phase of the heart lobing, as simple as that. Now let us start naming things. This part would be my Bulbus cordis, right? This loop would now be my ventricle because they were under the bulbus cordis, right? And this is the midline. Now what comes under after the ventricle? The atrium. Now where is the atrium? It is above my ventricle in the S phase. So this is how we ended up having the atrium above the ventricle. And this end will be my sinus venosus. Now of course, we don't have an S-shaped heart. What will happen next is that this atrium will eat the sinus venosus. As it's eating it, I will only have a U-shaped heart, right? And let me tell you, later on, this U-shape will go to the right. Now here come another question. We said that our hearts are pointing to the left, right? So how come I'm telling you that the heart went to the right. To be more exact, when the S phase happened, the ventricle actually, as they point, went downward, they went to the right, and as they went upward, they went to the left. Later on, as the sinus venosus ate, I'm sorry, as the atrium ate the sinus venosus, I had a V shape, heart pointing to the right. What will happen after that is that this V-shape will start growing. At the end of this V-shape, keep in your mind that I am having the ventricle. So this is my bulbous cortex. This would be my atrium. Here I will have my ventricle. 
in keeping your mind that the ventricles does not grow or the ventricles do not grow symmetrically one will be larger than the other as they are growing they will move to the middle and then to the left okay so initially the heart pointed to the right in the formation after that it went to the left and that is the normal the abnormal would be if the heart in its formation pointed to the left because later on with growing it will be ending up to the right and I will have dextral heart or dextrocardia so let us quickly review what we said we said that the heart will go right handed dextral looping it will end to the right from the S phase I will have the V phase and at the end it will go to the left we said that if the heart starting from the left it will end up to the right and I will have dextrocardia. But I, while explaining, answered the second question. Remember when I said that the sinus venosus at here is receiving blood from down, and we said the venous, venous blood comes from the upper side near the atrium? Actually, while explaining, I did explain it. You see, as the atrium ate the sinus venosus, the ending or the opening became right next to the arterial opening and that's how I ended up having a heart pointing to the left the sinus, sinus, I'm sorry the venous and the arterial blood are coming from the upper side and that's how I ended up having one connection to the heart not two now I only have him, the heart connected at the top from the anterior side, from the lateral side, from the posterior side I don't have any connection so only from the top and now I have something pretty similar to my actual heart as you can notice it in here so this would be my bulbous cordis this is my ventricle this is my atrium going up as we explained this is my ventricle going down as we explained later on with the formation I will end up having this this form this is my bulbous cordis of course these are the different parts of the bulbous cordis ignore them please this is the Bulbous cortex in simple words. This is my ventricle, and this ball, imagine the S behind here, is my atrium. Now, you can notice that the atrium is on, or seen on both sides of the bulbous cortex. The reason behind that is that actually the atria at this stage is very big. Keep in your mind that it swallowed the sinus venosus. So, imagine if I told you I'm trying to hide an elephant behind a tree. Will that work? No. I will be seeing the elephant from both sides. The exact same thing is in here. I'm seeing the atria from both sides of the pubis cortis. In this example, it would be the T. Now, at the end, I had this following circulation. This is the mother blood coming right to the heart, to the sinus venosus, before the spolumen happens. Then to the atria then to the ventricle, then to the bulbous cortex, and then to the arteries, supplying the entire embryo. Keep in your mind that I have two of each, because this is just a lateral folding. So I have two veins coming from the mother, two arteries going to the body. But in here, you can notice something interesting, that I have other veins going to the heart. But before we start explaining, I have two of everything. Now let us explain slowly the venous blood of the entire embryo. I have three groups. The vital line, the umbilical, and the... So umbilical, vital line, and cardinal. Okay? Let us start explaining them one by one. The umbilical will be bringing blood from the mother and it's right here. We already explained it's pathway. Okay? I have right and left. So right and left. Umbilical veins carrying blood from the mother to the cow, the land of the heart. As obvious in here. Now what about the vital line? A good way to remember them is vital line. So <laughs> energy or vitals line or tube. Anyhow, this vital line will be going to the area where as an adult I will be carrying my nutrients. So as an adult, from where do I get my energy? From my food. 
And what does process the food? My GI system or my stomach, which I really love food anyhow. This phase will be going to the area where the GI will form, and that is the umbilical vesicle. If you remember from your GI, we said that the intestine, because they are growing so rapidly, they went away from the embryo. They started doing all their folding and then they came back. Long story short, these veins will be supplying the GI. So my vital line, or vital line veins, will be supplying the area where I'll be having my vitals, or from my GI. What about the third group, the cardina? Now we explain where I'll be getting the oxygenated blood and how when about my GI. What about the rest of my body? The cardinal veins are constant or considered with the rest of my body. They will be draining venous blood from the entire embryo. But in order for them to do that, they cannot be simple. They must be more complex than the umbilical and the vital line. Their way of being complex is actually easy. See this connection? This is the cardinal vein. And then you can notice that it bifurcated or went to two sides. Anterior side and posterior side. So if this is my heart, they will be going posterior at the level of the heart. And then they will be going anterior to reach my head and posterior to reach my forming legs and yani, caudal parts. Their fusion at here is called the common cardinal. Simple as that. So anterior cardinal, posterior cardinal, and common cardinal. Now let us review the thing from zero. I had three groups of veins. Vital line, umbilical, and cardinal. Right? Vital line, I had two. Umbilical, I have two. Cardinal, I have two. So, right, common, cardinal. Right, vital line, right, umbilical. Left common cardinal, left vital line, and left 